Okay, we're going to practice some angle stuff. I'm going to give you a copy of your, your protractor today, so you actually have it. It's your You can use it to measure angles. But today I thought we better probably refresh your memory on some of the vocab we use. So, um, if you have paper, you can just kind of draw a mock sketch. Um, when, when you have graph paper, where do we start drawing an angle? Like where, where's our first dot? Say it again. That's zero, zero, right? So we're going to start right on the origin. Okay. Now, what is that dot called? Vertex. vertex. Okay. We're going to start the vertex right here. Now, the first ray we draw, it's called the initial ray. Where does it need to be drawn? X-axis. Going to the right. So there you go. This is the initial ray. It's the starting ray for how you first start drawing. Okay. So the initial ray. Where's the terminal ray going to be found? Okay. Yep. Counterclockwise, right? We open up counterclockwise and you can stop wherever you want. Now, there is some type of angle so you can go the other direction. We'll talk about those probably tomorrow. But typically you go open up uh, counterclockwise. You can stop your drawing wherever you want. That would be your terminal ray. That's your final ray. Now, if you don't have the graph paper, I'm totally fine with that. In fact, let me just get rid of it here. This is how your drawings would look. Always to the right, opening up counterclockwise. That's how we draw angles. That's something we introduced last Friday. That was our new thing. Now, here's the thing. We've had a lot of different types of angles, right? We had five types, if you can remember them, or you're looking at your notes. What type is that? So you say it's cute. It's cute. Why? You have the right. But why? Right? What makes this a cute? Yeah, less than 90, right? Between 0 and 90. Um, 90 degrees, that perfect L shape. So we're less than that. So it's definitely a cute, right? Small. Um, if I kept going, and eventually I got to that, what type of angle is that? Obtuse. Obtuse. Okay, this, is, this is past 90, past that L shape. So it's obtuse. The L shape is a right angle, perfect right. But this, uh, these are probably the two most common ones that we use, these two types, obtuse and acute. Acute small, obtuse is big. Acute puppy, puppies are small. Obtuse, uh, obese, big, right, big. Okay, questions on the concepts. Okay, perfect, well, let's talk about what we're doing today. We're gonna be drawing today. In fact, we're gonna be drawing with protractor. I printed these out. These are yours to keep. They're your copy. If you lose it, you have to go buy yourself one. So, I'm hand these out. They're see-through. If you can't read it, you're like, Ward, the numbers are backwards. You're a dork. Turn it over. Let's print it on one side. That's good. Man. That's good. I'm trying to get people out of here. Ward, you can't read the numbers are backwards. <laughs> oh, that's so over. <laughs> They stick to everything. The static charge built up on these things is incredible. It will stick to your paper and everything on it. Alright, here's two. I got your right one. No. I can feel the static on these things. Okay, so you got a protractor in front of you. Now, if you like, you could cut around it. You can cut it like really accurately. You don't need to. In fact, it looks terrible when you do that. I don't know why. It just looks really bad. It looks better when you leave in the big plastic. But there's there's an inconvenience about it, right? These things are huge, and you're thinking, okay, work. We got to measure angles with this thing. That thing's way too big. Like, or if you had to draw an angle, like I couldn't draw because there's so much plastic there. You can move it around. And I'm going to show you that today. That's our goal today. Now, I'm going to hand you paper today. You're not turning this one in. This is just for you, for your notes. It's just nice to have a nice piece of paper you can draw on today. Tomorrow, we're going to do constructions where you actually have to turn them in. Today is kind of like the practice day. We're going to practice because the construction we're going to do today is not easy. So, we need to practice it. 
So this piece of paper is yours. You will not need to turn it in. You don't even need to put your name on it. It's just one of those things like it's nice to get some practice on a piece of paper before we actually begin the kind of more challenging construction. All right, uh, once you get it, um, I'm gonna give you the tools here in a minute. Again, you are not turning these in. Try to go to the blank side. Don't go to the side with the grid on it. Okay. Get out some tools you're going to use. doing some drawing with this. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw an angle, but a very specific type of angle. And so, um, so imagine that this, this marker board is your piece of paper. So it's like the top of the paper, this is the side, the bottom, the rail. Right. Just get the idea. We're gonna be over on this side for right now, somewhere in this general area. I don't really care where you put it. We're gonna try to draw a very specific type of angle. So let's draw the initial ray. So. Here's my initial ray. It's going to the right. We always go to the right first. That's how we're going to start my angle. Now, how do you use this protractor correctly? That's probably the best way I can describe to you is how do we use it so that you know how to measure and draw correct angles. Because it is, it is a massive piece of plastic. I understand that. Okay, is everyone ready to go? Everyone's got it. Now, hopefully, when you draw this initial ray, you have room above it. If you put it too high on the paper, you won't have room to draw. So you might want to give it a little bit of space. If you need to go somewhere else in the paper or turn the paper over, that's fine. Okay, so here, here's what you need. So I'm going to use my little mock uh, protractor. It's terrible. It's made of wood. You guys can get it. Okay, so for mine, I have to line up the arrow. You guys have that dot in the middle of your protractor, right? It's like a round dot right in the center. Okay, I want you to line up that little dot on your origin or on your vertex. So you have that little dot in the middle of your, your protractor. Line it up and then line up the initial ray with that wall, that line that goes along that protractor. So it should go out. And what you're going to do is you're going to start over here, you're going to start on the right side, and you're going to count up. So I'm using the inner track numbers, the smaller numbers, until you get to 30 and make a little mark. Now here's the problem. You guys can't make that mark, correct? Because you have a lot of plastic. So when you get to 30, what I would like you to do is move the protractor out of the way, but don't move your paper. Just move the protractor and make your little mark. Okay, so you just can move the protractor out of the way and make your mark. Just hover your pencil where it needs to be. Now, once you're done making that mark, put the protractor back on the paper and remeasure after you've drawn that mark. So draw your mark where it sits, right? Put the protractor back up there and measure, was that 30? Because it, it, you better double check, right? Because you might have been a little bit off. Like mine, mine's a little low. So I'm going to raise up my dot just a hair. I need to go up just a hair. There we go. And what you're going to do is you take your straight edge and draw that final line. Take your straight edge, draw that final line, boom. This is my 30 degree angle. So hover your pencil above the 30. Move the plastic out of the way without moving your paper, and then make your little mark, and then remeasure it and see if you were correct. Then you can draw that final line. If it looks good, draw. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around the room. I know that seems silly. I'm going to walk around the room, and all I want to do, I'm not going to put my protractor on your paper in it. I just want to see, does it look correct? Because, I mean, when you see it, it should look small. Because what type of angle is 30? Cute. I should be able to see that from like 10 feet away. Now, is it in the ball? 
And I'll walk around there. I know some people are still finishing. But it's yeah. Help each other out. Yeah, it should look good. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just I should be able to look and go, okay, that looks about right. So far I'm good. Okay. Okay. Good back there. I know you're still turning all the time. All right, yeah. so everyone's got the idea, everyone's got that 30. You know, it does, once you get it kind of mastered what you need to do, like kind of move it out of the way and mark, you're fine. It's, if it's in the ballpark, I usually give it to you. Now, here's what, here's what we need to do. We need to focus on like the labels, right? So on your 30, let's put some dots. So let's put, um, let's put B at the vertex. Let's put A up here at one of the rays, and let's put B, uh, C on the other ray. So one of the rays has A, one of the other rays has C, and B is at the vertex. I don't really care where you put A and C. So B is at the vertex, though. Now, the reason why is we need to get practice how do you name an angle, right? You guys have drawn it. You guys have shown that you're pretty good at that. But how do you name it? A, C, B. Okay, so one of the ways, and I already heard it, the three-letter system. You pick one of the rays, you pick the vertex, and then you pick the other ray. A three letter system, ABC. You could switch it around. Angle CBA. But the vertex should always be the middle letter. Now, what's another way I could write that? Angle B. Angle B. Okay, does everyone understand that if it's a simple looking angle, do you agree this is a very simple looking drawing? It's one angle. You could just call it angle B. The vertex is the most important letter. Now, on this one, Hopefully everyone has these written down below your angle. It's nice to have those kind of written down for your note purposes. I want you to write this one down for sure, angle B. And here's the weird thing. I want you to put a little M in front of the little angle symbol. Put a little M. M means you measured it. What's the measure of this angle? What's what I measure it to be? 30. Does that make sense what the little M means? This little M means measure. The measure of angle B. So just get used to that. The book will start using that little M symbol a lot. It means you're measuring it. Okay, are we good so far? All right, let's go to another spot on your paper. Find another blank space. Find another blank space. Draw a 75 degree angle now. Let's see what you can see what you can do without me drawing it first. Draw a 75. I'm going to get I'm just going to walk around the room. Does it even look right? Get some practice. This is the whole purpose today. It's just practice. We're not turning these in. Can we get some good looking pictures out of this? We understand how to use that protractor correctly. Five degrees. Is it in the ballpark? You're done. Does it look like mine? That's the thing. Does it look like mine? If it doesn't, maybe you did the wrong numbers. That's what we'll talk about. Because I didn't give you any hints for how to do it. Also. Did you get the right drawing?
Okay. Now, you're probably thinking, Warren, how would somebody mess this up? Let's talk about it. 75 degrees. Do you agree that it's in between two major marks? Mm -hmm. So when you put your protractor down, you guys are trying to figure out the measurement, and you line up your vertex, you line up that initial side with zero, and then you start counting out 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. You have to go in between 70 and 75. The most common mistake people make is they do this. They start counting up, and they get up to, they see 70, and they... They see 70 and they see, they see 60 and they go, oh, 75 is there because it's past 70. You have to be on the other side because you're counting from zero up to 75. So some people draw it too short. They draw it almost 10 degrees smaller than what it should be. Because they see the 70 and they go five in front of it. When that's 65, you have to count up. The other common mistake that I see people make is when I see 75. Here's the drawing I get. What happened on this drawing? It's past 90. You drew up twos. Yeah, because I agree. When you look at this thing, right, there's two sets of numbers. You have to start at zero and always count up. So start with this is zero and start counting up on the inner track numbers until you hit 75. Right? It's just one of those things. Like I didn't tell you that. It's just a common mistake people make. So I, I think probably the most common mistake is this one where you stop too early because you didn't see that you had to go past 70 you thought it was a number in front of 70 because you're not looking at the digits okay are we good so far find a blank space on your paper this is one of our last um, drawings before we do some major stuff here i want you to draw a 122 degree angle. 122. After this, we're going to do some other fun drawings here. So if you're looking up here, I know some of you are still drawing. What's wrong, what's wrong with my drawing? Too small. That's an acute angle, smaller than 90, smart, smaller than the L shape. Because I know you're looking at the wrong numbers, even though that said 122. You're, you're using the outer track and you should be using inner track. Remember, start at zero and then count up. So that way you know which track you should be using, depending on the way you face. I stopped too early because I saw the 122, but that wasn't the right number. I was using the outer track, and I should have been using the inner track and going up to 122 this direction. That one. This is what your angle should look like. So double check. Is it obtuse? Is it bigger than an L shape? If it's not, go remeasure. Maybe you just were off by a little bit. Up to 122, go past 120 by two, two hash marks. Now, on your on your angle, let's call this J, K, M, N, and P, where M is at the vertex.
How do we name it? Oops. Say again? Angle what? Okay. Call it angle one. What else can we call it? I agree with that. That's good. Okay. Angle K M N. That's good. Another name. It's a male snap. That was good. Thank you for those two. Please. J M P. I like it. Another one, please. Say it again. K M P. We call it N M J. N M J. Call it that. Or M is the middle letter. N first, then J. If I put a little M out front, that means they want you to measure it. That's 122. I know it seems really goofy when they use two M's, but you get the idea. Well, we'll measure. Get used to how they want they, how they want you to write it. Okay. Are we good so far? Okay. Here's what I like you to do. Okay. These protractors. Are yours to keep? I use them as a bookmark. I would like you to put it away for you. But just put it behind you. Put it somewhere where you're not going to use it. Could be next to you, could be in your little folder. Just put it somewhere where you're going to remember where it sits in about <laughs> two seconds. All right. How are we good so far? All right. What we're going to learn how to do, we're going to do this. This is our first day of practicing this. We're going to copy one of your angles to new location without the protractor that you just had two seconds ago. Okay. Now, I know that seems weird. It's like, Lord, why would you copy an angle if you don't have a protractor? Because um, this is this is pretty accurate. Okay, I could copy really easy. It's like your ruler, right? You get used to the, how to use it, how to draw with it, and you get pretty good at it. But I don't want to use it. I want to use this. I want to use your compass. Maybe think of more. Not everyone's going to have a compass, and not everyone's going to have a protractor out in the real world. I understand that. But here's the crazy thing. Everyone has a shoestring. I can do the same construction with the shoestring, which is really weird. And I'm going to show you how to do it. How you can make this thing from a simple string like the concept of it and how, it, how it is actually insanely accurate. Okay, so what, I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to copy your 30 degree angle to a new location somewhere in your paper that is blank and open. So, she's got a lot of open space, right? I can put this angle anywhere I want. It does not have to be next to the 30. It doesn't even have to be touching it. It can be anywhere floating. If you do not have room, we can copy this angle to a different sheet of paper. Maybe you have a notebook opened up right next to you. You can copy it to a different sheet of paper completely. Okay, so here's what you need to do. First step, take your straight edge. Get your straight edge right now. And we're gonna draw, we're gonna draw the initial side that kind of mimic this one. We're not gonna, we're not gonna measure it. I'm just gonna draw a wall that looks like it's going the same direction. So it's gonna be going that way. It doesn't even have to be the same length, because length doesn't matter in angles. Give yourself some space, because we're going to need room above it to draw. If you don't give yourself room up here, you're doing yourself no good, because we have to copy the angle. It's going to be above that line. So give yourself plenty of space. Don't put it at the top of your paper where you have no room to draw. All right, is everyone good? Everyone's got it? You got their line drawn. Okay, take your compass. Open it up random. I don't even care how big you open it. That's the beauty of this. We don't even have to measure that. And what we're going to do, it's going to seem a little goofy. I'm going to put the little pike, the little pointy end, right on my vertex B. And I'm going to draw an arc. And this is random. I don't, I'm not even measuring this at all. Um, I'm going to draw an arc on the original angle. It doesn't have to hit A or C, it just has to hit both walls on the original angle, or 30 degree angle that you had. So go up to your original angle 30, you know your angle B, and draw an arc and it has to hit both. In fact, when you do this, you're not going to change the compass for a very long time. So leave this compass alone after you do this. So you're going to have to this compass, you're going to draw the arc and it has to hit both walls like this. 
has to hit the original wall twice. Do that right now. Notice I did not hit A and I did not hit C, but it has to hit both walls. If yours does not hit both walls, maybe you need to extend one of the walls further so it can actually hit it. You can do that, take your straight edge, extend this wall further so it actually hits. Okay, now when you do this, do not change your compass. Leave the compass alone after you do this. So I just drew my arc. Did everyone see what I did there? Everyone's good? Okay, pick up your compass without changing it and leave it alone. I'm going to go over to my new drawing and I'm going to draw the exact same arc. Now, I'm drawing mine clearly longer than the original one. I definitely need to make sure that it hits the wall, hits my initial side, but then I'm just going to basically do like a quarter turn, so I'm almost drawing like a 90 degree piece of pie. It's like almost going all the way up. It's got to be clearly longer than the original drawings. But this compass setting did not change. I drew it on the original picture. I went over to the new picture and I drew the exact same arc, the same length of it. So everyone see how I did that? Do that right now. Draw both arcs on both and make sure that it's bigger than the original. This is the part where most people go wrong is when they do this. They go over to the next picture and they don't draw it long enough. It's got to be plenty long. Okay, is everyone good? Everyone's got their arcs drawn. Okay, here's, here's the reason why I had you circle these two spots earlier. If you have both arcs drawn and you feel comfortable with those, now we're about to change the compass. And you do not want to change this unless you know for sure those two arcs are done and they're complete. Are they done? Are they complete? Take your compass. We're going to measure this gap. The two spots where I just circled. I'm measuring the compass. I'm putting the pipe right here on the initial wall. I'm putting the pencil up here where the other arc hit. Not letter A, but this spot. I'm measuring this gap. Basically, this angle is mimicking what I'm trying to draw here. I'm measuring that gap, that how big this angle is with my compass. Once you have this measured, you're going to go over to the new drawing. I'm putting the pipe on the initial side. And the pencil should be floating up here and it should do something like this. Or it should float, make a floating X out in the middle of nowhere. So again, I measure the gap, I go to the new picture, and I make my little floating mark. And what do you think I have to do last? Yeah, draw a line that goes from the vertex out to that little X marks the spot. So use your straight edge. <laughs> use your straight edge. Pick it up, put your straight edge down, and draw that final line. It goes straight out through that little X. They should be perfect carbon copies of the original angle. They should look really close. Yeah, this is probably the hardest construction to draw, but once you see it, you're like, wow, that is really accurate. You can draw that final line going out. Measure with your protractor. You can pick up your protractor now. Remeasure it. It should be really close. Some people are usually off. It's their first time. But they're, they're supposed to be perfect copies. Again, how I drew that line. It's where that X marks the spot. I'm going from the vertex out to X marks the spot. That's how I drew it. They should be perfect carbon copies. Now, I know everyone's like, well, or why don't you just use the protractor? Like, it didn't make any sense. You're using a compass. Not everyone's going to have a compass. I understand that. Now everyone's going to have a protractor in the real world. But let me show you how to do it with the shoes here. Okay, I'm going to show you how to draw that 30 degree angle, that same angle I just did a little bit ago, with a shoestring. Here's my initial line. I'm going to pick up a shoestring now. Okay. Now, you guys have it a lot easier because you have a pencil. We'll have to do this with a marker. 
tie the shoestring right to my marker. This marker is going to be like the end of my, it's going to be like the pencil lead of my, uh, my compass. Let's go. All right, so here we go. Okay, so here's what you do. You go over to the original drawing, you open up your compass. This is my compass. I put on a little pike and I draw my little arc. Draw my arc over, draw the same arc. She's using my shoestring. Now what I do is I go measure how big the gap was. Go over to the new drawing, mark that distance. Measuring. That was a shoestring. That's probably really accurate too. Which is terrifying. Because it was a shoestring. They need to use an expensive set of tools. But it's one of those things like once you get used to it, this concept of how to copy angles, it didn't have to be 30. I could have done this on any type of angle I wanted. That's, the, that's kind of the beauty of this. What we're going to look at tomorrow is drawing you know, different types of angles with our, with our tools, uh, very specific. Here's the thing, like, I know if you had your protractor in front of you, you can draw any type of angle you want. But what I'm going to try to teach you tomorrow is that with, with your simple compass, this thing, and the straight edge you have in front of you, we can draw virtually any type of angle perfectly. What I mean by that is, you know, these are random angles. So we pick 30, we pick 75, we pick 122. But with this, I can draw very specific angles. I can teach you how to draw a perfect 90 degree angle. I can teach you how to cut it in half and make 45. I can teach you how to take this and draw a perfect 60 degree angle and cut that in half and make, fit, you know, make 30 and 15s. And then we can combine those and make other types of angles. I obviously taught you how to copy angles to new locations. So there's really crazy stuff you can do with this stuff that's very specific so you can get the exact angles you need on a drawing without the need of a protractor in front of you. It's just it's kind of helpful that you can remeasure it. All right, questions at all about our constructions? This piece of paper is yours to keep. Just keep it in your notes, put it in your notebook for, for tomorrow. We're going to look at those. We're going to do Now, tomorrow, we are going to turn in paper tomorrow, and you have to have the constructions correct. So that's why we practiced it today. So I'm hoping that some of you paid attention to that. Uh, put your compasses and the strangers back in the pouch. I'm going to collect them, and we're done for the day. You have some time, you can relax. Yeah, bye. Five minutes.